Right, hello and welcome back to another video. So this week I'm very pleased to announce that I have finished the next course in my Niagara series. So this is Niagara Advanced. Part one of the course we looked at all the things we can do within the Niagara context. Um, all the modules, all the renderers, we looked at forces and velocities and vectors and volumes and all of these other things that we can do within Niagara. Uh, and in this course we're going to look at how we can take data from outside of Niagara and bring it in through the data interfaces. So <clears throat> starting here in part one with a deep dive into rain. Rain is an effect, obviously fills the world, but there's lots of edge cases where we don't want it. So inside buildings or under overhangs. Um, and how can we fix that? Well, we'll look at four different ways we can do that. Each with their own advantages and disadvantages, uh, taking height maps, taking render targets, using the runtime virtual texture, uh, talking about collisions, all these different things um, and how they can be used to, to pass data into Niagara and then use that to control our rain. Part two expands on that, taking the same kind of data, um, but what happens when we sample it multiple times? Can we do things like flow maps? Yes, we can. We can take the terrain, we can generate a flow from map from that, uh, and we can get these kind of terrain aligned particles that work really well. Um, we can do things like spline sampling here along the river. Uh, we can use the river mesh itself via UVs or vertices, sample that data, and use that to drive our particles. Uh, and finally, we can also use the mesh distance field um, and so here we've got some collision avoidance from our particles just taking the uh, sine distance field that the engine generates. Part 3 is a deep dive into sine distance fields, uh, making our own <coughs> using material functions, um, combining them, editing them, animating them, um, exporting that data, importing it into Unreal, uh, into Niagara. Uh, and what can we do? Well, we can use that then to drive our particles, creating these really interesting complex shapes that would be very difficult to do with the inbuilt forces and things. And then finally, part four. Uh, yes, uh, part four, we're going to be looking at meshes and how we can use that mesh distance field uh, to create behaviors and control. So here we just have a basic setup spawning on surfaces. Uh, we have some avoidance. So looking at the mesh distance field, trying to create um, forces that push our particles away from those surfaces um, and get some, some quite nice realistic results there. Uh, and then finally, finishing up with some player-based interactions as well. So um, either directly from the player or from a little flashlight, um, create a little torch. Uh, and then finally, <coughs> same thing, but with some additional behaviors as well. So fading out over time, um, time-based state machines, these kinds of things, really trying to push the uh, kind of level of complexity and interaction uh, for these these creature swarms. There's a lot of content, it's about seven and a half hours and I think 50 videos, however many examples, um, and we really dive deep into the technical side of things. So importing data, um, data interfaces, lots of scratch modules, lots of kind of more complicated things, really building up that toolkit. Um, once we start using that, importing data, plus the tools inside Niagara, the the level of complexity that we can get and the level of dynamic interaction and all of that uh, becomes really, really powerful. So lots of really cool stuff in here. Um, <coughs> if you do think it looks interesting and you're not quite sure you're at that level, do check out the first course, Introduction to Niagara. There's about 15 hours of content in there. Um, so a really good course as well to get your, your basics down. Um, and then here, they're picking up the advanced stuff uh, and then kind of combining it all together. So uh, check out. The course is going to be available on Gumroad today. Uh, it's going to be coming on Udemy soon. Um, yeah, and check out all my other courses as well. So there's a four-part materials course if uh, if you want to kind of have a deep dive into materials. Um, cool. Hope you all find that interesting. Have a great holiday season, and I'll be back next year with even more tutorials.